Okay, bubble, bubble, toil, and trouble. We are in trouble, folks. Let's get back to it. All right, so that was Jen's turn. My turn. Sliding. Uh, right, and a new event comes out, and it is a mysterious contagion. This is an easy one. We need uh, three chalices or four stars. I think stars are charms and chalices are potions. So we need three potions or four charms. And when this thing is overcome, a player must discard two witch cards. Uh, if no player can, this event is not overcome. So we have to not banish, but just... So that means, chances are, after we get rid of this, we won't have enough cards to actually do a recruiting on that turn. But, and the other thing, this is once again, it doesn't have a Liberty Bell, it doesn't have a gun, so we don't mind this thing sticking around a little while. Because to do it, um, let's see, I have two chalices, two potions, and does Jen have any? Jen has one, so she could assist me, because I could play these two, and Jen could play one, but then after that, um, one player. It could be me. I would have to discard two more, or Jen would have to discard two more. Let's go on ahead and take it out, um, because you know I'm worried. You know I'm worried about them building up too much. Like you know, if if we leave these out, remember there was that one we defeated a while ago. This one would become much more powerful if two things were to the right of it. So it's it's not always a wise idea to leave things out, even if um, you know even if they're not hurting you right now, they could hurt you later. So I will go on ahead and play two potions. Jen will assist with one. Uh, and fortunately, she can, remember, because we got rid of that uh, calamity that prevented us from co coordinating. So general assist with one. That's the three we need to take this out. And we either get a chalice or a star. Let's get another chalice. So we're getting closer and closer to the Philosopher's Stone. And now, so that does get discarded. This gets discarded. And either Jen or I have to discard two cards. If I discard two cards, all I've got is this, and that means I won't do any recruiting this turn. So I asked Jen, hey, honey, if I could you discard? She says, sure, okay, I'll discard two cards. So Jen will discard two cards. Um, or can we split that? Could I discard one and Jen discard one? Let me look at that a bit more closely. Let's see here. Um, a player must discard two. Yeah, all right, so all right, we, we can't split it, which would be ideal. So, let's see. Although, do I want to recruit anything? This, oh, it's a relic. It's free. No, I can get that. Oh, okay, so I'll be the one to discard. And now, recruiting, I'll recruit this relic for free. I'll draw back up to five. One, two, three. All right. One, two, three. And I'm good to go. And now it is Jen's turn. Sliding over. New people come. Oh, hey, it's our first blessing of winter. When this is flipped, do not advance the recruits. Instead, choose one of these two options and then banish this card. Any player may remove one marker from an objective. So we can just make one more progress on any of these. or and, and any player can do it. So that player will get to take that token to have on hand for future uses. Or every player can draw a card, even if it exceeds their hand size. That's pretty cool. That would be really good if we both had low hand sizes right now because we'd assist each other, but I don't think we need that. So let's go on ahead, we banish this, and we get to immediately eliminate one thing. Let's have Jen do it, and she'll take this. And so now Jen's got two icons she can use in the future, and now we only need th to do three more cauldrons, and we will have recovered the Philosopher's Stone, and we will immediately get the benefit of one player can reshuffle their Coven discard. Because remember, normally when you reshuffle, and that's coming fast, I've only got two cards in my deck. And um, as soon as I run out of cards and I have to reshuffle my discard pile, the moon moves up and we start getting more icons. So before I have to reshuffle, it would be great to finish the rest of these so I could reshuffle without suffering the, the, uh, the damage. But anyway, so that slid over and a new event comes out. This doesn't have to slide because we uh, filled that hole. So a hysterical mob hangs a suspected witches. We can't let this happen. Now, this is a general purpose one. The moon means, again, it's a wild. Any icon could go here. We need nine total icons, and only seekers and relics can be used. So that means our cool, really big, powerful, our celebrants, and our, I forget what the other stuff, the other ones are called, the uh, stewards, we can't use our powerful ones. We have to use our weak ones to do that. And it's a Liberty Bell, so if it slides over, tyranny is going to increase. So it's Jen's turn. Can she generate nine by herself? Well, no, she can't because... Well, okay, but remember, she got this to take out Fort um, St. John, so that's what she's going to do. Jen is going to act not against that, 
But if she doesn't, this is going to slide over and we're going to have tyranny. So can she take that one out instead? She can't use this. She could use a seeker and a seeker and a relic. So that means she has six, se she has seven icons. She needs nine. If I contribute, I can only help with one. Um, right. Yeah, I can only help with one. Now it's a shame because if in my hand, where are they? If I had in my hand a dedicant, remember I had a dedicant, but I got rid of her. The special power of a dedicant is if you assist with a dedicant, you can also assist with the seeker so that you can give two icons to your teammate when you're helping. So that's the power of a dedicant. If Jen has, what was it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I had a dedicant, I could use that and one of my seekers and combined, we could defeat this thing, but I don't. So Jen can't do it herself, so she's going to go with the original plan. Um, Stuart Frieda, this is more than enough. She's going to play this card. Um, she needed uh, four. She's spending six. She has defeated this, and uh, we get another charm or another, or whatever these are. Let's, let's go on ahead and, and continue focusing on these two. So Jen has that now. Oh, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. Jen does have an option. Instead of using this to take this out, Jen could use all seven of these plus these two. She's got these two. That would be, oh wait, oh wait, oh wait, no. Because this, um, you can only use Seekers and Relics. You cannot use these bonus tokens. So Jen can't do that. Never mind. I'm sorry. So Jen will stick with the original plan. She'll use this to take this out. That got her another red that she's got that she can use in the future. And she can still recruit. Let's see, although there's nobody cheap, although this guy gets a, reduce, a reduction of one if we use a purple. So if Jen discards this, this is one star, but it really counts as two because it's purple. And then this would be three, and that, so she can't do it anyway because she only has one, two, three, so she cannot get him. So Jen can't recruit anyway. All right, so Jen's not recruiting. She fought that. She does not have enough stars on hand to recruit. So that was the end of her turn. She's going to draw back up. All right, she could discard, but you don't want to do that unless you are really desperate to get a particular card. My turn, things slide over, um, and boom, the Liberty Bell tyranny has happened. These discounts have gone away. We now have to pay full price to recruit. A new event comes out. Um, it is, oh, um, uh, 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 some famous Hall Burns. All right, and this is another, it's a, and, uh, you know, and, Unaligned event, which means it's a wild card. I need to give up seven. And when flipped, when this first comes out, the current player, that's me, must banish a card from my hand. Oh, no. I got to banish one of my cards. I guess I'll get rid of one of my seekers. Um, let's see. I'll go on ahead. I know I've gotten a lot of purple, so I'll get rid of this purple. So I had to banish because of that when it came out. And now, so we can't use seeker. We can, we can, we can only use seekers or relics, so I can't use him. Oh, I can use this relic. And okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So again, I've got seven. And Jen, she cannot, she could only give me one icon. So this is another turn where we cannot deal with this. We really need one of those cat ladies so that somebody can give us two icons. This is getting scary. But can I take out the other one? There's no restriction on that. I just need seven. So I could do this one by myself. Um, well, you know, because it's eight, so that's four. Five, six, seven. So I'm going to play both of these. Let's see. Oh, oh yeah. It's interesting. It, when I act with this to take out an event, uh, this says another player could contribute two icons from their card instead of one. So this would be great against this, except you can only use Seekers and Relics. You can't use Celebrants. Uh, and this Relic, I'm going to use both these. Once a Relic is used, it's gone. And now this goes into my discard pile, and I've taken this out. So that means this is not going to get pushed farther, because if it gets pushed farther, it's going to do more tyranny. So this has been taken out, and I get a moon icon. All right, so that's more stuff I can use in the future. Um, now, that's interesting. I didn't have to throw this relic away. I could have, because it's, uh, it's a wild, I could have used all three of these to uh, do it instead. The other thing is, well, I forgot to mention, you can use these as stand-ins for cards when you're fighting events, or you can spend two of them to count as one star when you're recruiting, if you don't have enough stars. When I said Jen couldn't afford to recruit before, she could have if she would have um, banished two of these to get one star worth. 
So you do have a little bit more flexibility about recruiting. But anyway, so I, but I'm still fine with it. I mean, recruits, uh, relics, you're going to get, um, should I keep this relic though? Because we need relics to beat this. This is dangerous. I don't think it's a good time to be getting rid of relics. Instead of using this relic for its three icons, I use these three things plus my celebrant. These are out of the game to defeat that event. I'm keeping the relic. If I can get a couple of relics in my hand, I'll be able to take this out by myself. Although, unfortunately, there are no relics to recruit. So I took it out. Now I can do more recruiting, but the discounts are gone. So this guy costs four. This guy costs three. This I only have two stars, two and a half. So I can't recruit anybody. So my turn is over. I'm going to draw two cards. And my deck is empty. Uh, at the end of my next turn, we are going to, I'm going to have to, well, this is interesting. At the end of your turn, when you get to drawing, you have a choice. You can either draw back up to five, however many cards that would be, or you can choose not to draw at all. And next turn, I might choose. I might play a few cards, and then I might choose not to draw my hand up. Because as soon as I draw my hand up, a new event is going to come out. Now, that means over time, I'll slowly empty out, and I won't have anything. But it is a strategic choice I can take to wait on drawing. Because if we can get lucky and take these three things out, then I could draw. With, I could reshuffle my deck without pushing the moon track up. But anyway, so that was my turn. I couldn't recruit anything. Um, and so I've got a full hand. I didn't have to write yet. And so now it's Jen's turn. A new recruit comes out. And a new event comes out. Swamp Gas threatens farms. Oh, no. This is another tough one. And we need four blue or five red. This event requires one extra icon per event to the left. So the longer this sticks around, the tougher it gets to beat. Right now, we need four or five. Next round, we need five or six, seven or eight. This gets scary. We need to take that out right now. Yikes. Can Jen take it out? Does she have four blue? She has one blue. She has no red. Wow. Um, and she doesn't have any... Wow. Oh, my gosh. That's super scary. Oh, my gosh, gosh, gosh. Wow. And she still... This is interesting, though. We can take this one out now because, Jen, she, all she has is Seekers and Relics. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If Jen plays three of her Seekers and gets rid of this Relic, Jen can take this out before it slides on and hits us with more Tyranny. But that means she'll be down to one card, which means and she should really recruit because it'd be great to recruit this guy because he'll give us a bunch of red to be able to take this out. And we could wait. We don't have to take this out right now. It's going to be two turns before this hits us on Liberty again. So does Jen recruit this guy so we can take this out? Because the longer this survives, the tougher this gets. This doesn't get any tougher. This just hurts us as it slowly moves. If Jen, The sooner we take this out, this thing won't push forward. So does Jen go for a big recruit or does she go for a big kill? I think she'll go for the recruit. So it, unfortunately, there's no discount because of the tyranny. So... Um, right. Oh, shoot. Actually, wait a minute. I'm sorry. We don't have tyranny right now because I totally forgot. There's one very important thing. Uh, here's all the stuff we've defeated so far. Every time you defeat a Liberty Bell, and we have successfully defeated two Liberty Bell um, events, the Liberty Meter goes up. So the first, I totally forgot to do this. When the, when the first time we defeated a Liberty Bell, it moves up too. The second time we did it, it moved up again. And now, when this thing hit, it only moved down one. So, um, we don't have to worry about this. This thing could go live quite a while before we're going to cross. I totally forgot. Every time you defeat a Liberty Bell thing, we work our way back up the Liberty Track. So, I'm not worried about that. That way, we leave this alone for a while um, because I'm saving up to do it with Relics and Seekers. Jen is going to build hire this guy instead. So, um, she d we do still have a discount. Um, it costs one less if she pays with a red. She has no reds! No! But we need this guy anyway. So Jen will go on ahead and she will pay three stars full price to get him. So she goes to the deck. She's going to redraw. One, two. And Jen has nothing more to draw. So this is it, folks. Jen now has to take her deck. Shuffle it back up and keep drawing. Now, she didn't have to draw, but she needed to draw to get that guy she recruited so she could um, defeat the Swamp Gas. She um, reshuffles, 
fills her hand back up, but now the moon has gone up. It doesn't increase the cost yet, but we immediately make another event appear. This Liberty Bell doesn't strike until it moves on again. And another Liberty Bell comes out. Ann Bates leads a British spy ring. Ann Bates, another turncoat in our midst. And as long as this is face up, if a catastrophe is added to the line, immediately add another event to a line. Now, we don't have any catastrophes right now, but if, an, as, if we don't get this out and another catastrophe appears, that means two events come out instead of one. So you can see how we could really get run over here if we don't start taking these things out. But anyway, that was Jen's turn. Oh, and um, right. Oh, because that was her turn from just having to reshuffle her deck. Now it's my turn. A new recruit comes out and a new event comes out and this Liberty Bell hits, so it slides back down. And this Liberty Bell hit, so it slides down. We're almost back to tyranny, and the new event, phew, it's not a catastrophe, or else that would have been bad. Instead, a black dog terrorizes a remote village. We need four potions or five cauldrons. And when we beat this, another player must discard two witch cards. If no player can, then we can't beat it. All right. So, we're, it's starting to build up on us, folks. It takes us easy at first, but things are starting to build up. Now, can I beat this now? I've got a relic. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to beat this now before it um, pushes any farther forward. But here's the thing. If I beat this, then this will push forward. We don't care. And this doesn't push forward. And um, as long as this is around, we run the risk of another catastrophe making this strike. So this is more dangerous than this. To beat this, I need 11. I need 13 total icons to beat this. I've got everything I need to beat this. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I need thirteen. Does, can um, let's see. Jen could help me if no, she can't because I have all I've got is seekers, and Jen doesn't have any um, dedicants, does she? No. So Jen can't. I, so I cannot do this one. So I'm going to finish this. It's been here for far too long, and so here's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All righty. The relic got discarded, or these all go to my discard pile, and this is beaten. It was a Liberty Bell. Our Liberty climbs. Hooray! And I get another moon. So I've got two moons that I can use on a future unaligned event, or they can count as one star for purchasing. All right, so that's it. I've got one card left in my hand, um, which is one star, although again, I do have two stars. But, and which means, yeah, this guy costs three minus one if I pay with this. So I'm going to pay this plus both of these to banish him and replace him with this guy. Because that is an upgrade from two icons to four icons. All right, that goes in my draw pile. Now, it's the end of my turn. I have to draw. I have nothing in my hand. I'll draw five cards. That's going to make the moon go up again. And now it's plus one. Whenever we pay, we have to pay one additional icon for any event we try to beat. Because I, am, I have no cards in my hand. It doesn't do me any good to do nothing. So I'm going to draw, and I'm reshuffling just like Jen did. So we didn't clear this out in time to avoid this. All right, one, two, three, four. Five. Unfortunately, I had to shuffle, so that means the moon track goes up and another event immediately comes out. Which, okay, nothing happens with those, but this new event, don't be, oh, it's a catastrophe! Which means that um, Ann Bates is going to strike. Well, first of all, while face up, recruiting costs one extra star, even relics. So it's more expensive to recruit now because this just came out. And she, uh, it was a catastrophe, so that means another event comes out. Oh, no. And that means Liberty struck and Liberty struck again. We're almost back to tyranny. And what's the new thing that came out because of Ann Bates? Uh, Charleston is besieged. All right. And when this is flipped, the current player, that's me, must discard their hand and then draw four cards. So all these cards I just, including the card I just bought, I have to discard them all, which means I'm going through my deck that much faster. No! One, two, three, four, five. Aye, 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 aye. That was a very, 
very bad turn. It's Jen's turn now. Hey, a new uh, recruit comes out and another event. So, um, all right, there, there, there's nothing. No Liberty Bell, no Liberty Bell, no Liberty Bell. Liberty Bell, boom. Once again, there's no discounts for buying. And another event comes out and we have Brigand's Ravaged Farmsteads. Uh, this event requires one extra icon per completed objective. Everything requires one extra icon, so this requires two extra icons. And if one, two, three more events come out without us clearing these things out, we lose. So, it was taking it easy on us before, folks, but now the pressure is on. Jen is up. She's got all these reds that she um, wanted to get rid of this. But man, Jenny Clark is killing us. Every catastrophe that comes out, that really hurts us bad. Um, and remember, everything costs one more icon right now. And I can give Jen one extra icon. Although, if Jen fights with this, uh, when you act with him to fight, another player can contribute two icons. So, Jen could go with this. This is four. And because she's using it, I could give two icons to her instead of one. Although, I mean, that would be a red and a green. And she, needs, she already needs one, two, three, four, five reds. Six. She needs six reds for this. I could still only give her five. But if she f uses this to fight the, the, uh, the brigands over here, this needs six as well, though, because it's plus one, plus one. Ah! Oh, my gosh. Well, as you can see, folks, we're out of the frying pan and into the fire. And hopefully, very soon, we will get to the, set, the next good card. How deep is it? How deep is it? How deep is it? How deep is it? Oh, my gosh. Where is it? We need some relief. It's in here somewhere. Oh, my gosh. There it is. Wow. We have to go a long ways before this comes out and gives us a little bit of a breather. We're in trouble, folks. But, hey, that's par for the course when you're witches of the revolution. Now, if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.